Welcome to a look inside Myquan Math Lab materials. So the Myquan Math Lab materials, there's six books in all. I only have four of them. If we look in the back of the book, you'll see there are children's materials. You start with the orange book, then red, then blue, which is this one, green, yellow, and purple. And they're designed to be used over three years, two books a year, starting in the first grade. So first, second, and third year basically. There's also some notes to teachers and some lab sheet annotations and a diary for your student to keep. So let's open up and take a look at what the actual student book looks like. Now you can see I've cut the binder off this one. That's because of my incessant need for not using disposable books as disposable but to um, photocopy them. The problem with Mike Wan books is as we get started here you'll see we'll open the book and you'll see that each of the pages is so colorful, which is, this is a good thing. I like it. My students like it. It's very fun for them to see the different colors on each page. But you'll also see that with the colors being as they are, photocopying, not only is it more expensive to photocopy colors, which I could get over. You can photocopy them in black and white, but they're actually quite faint. These are not real vivid, vibrant, dark colors on the page, especially the blue. I think the blue and there's an orange. Yeah, this orange here. It's very hard to photocopy this well. So I, I get a little frustrated with that. I'm not sure why they did it that way. I'm thinking because the color is very fun for the student. My kids like that. They like seeing what color the next page was going to be, but it does pre pre um, prevent you from photocopying them very well. So let's just put these out of the way here. We'll look at those in a second. Let's just look at the first one real quick and see what we have. So when you open up, you see that you have pages. Basically, there are activities you can do. This one is to cross out all the odd numbers, but they don't just they don't define the odd number for you. You can see that they go right from, oh, if I add four and four, is the answer even or odd? So they kind of assume that the student knows what even or odd is. So that's your job as the teacher or as the parent to explain that concept to your child. What is even? What is odd? Okay, and that's where qu your quiz and your rods really come in handy. If you have a pile of, well, let's go back to this page. If you have four plus four, you have four rods and four rods and you put them together, you have eight rods. Then you ask the student, oh, how can we define even or odd based on the fact that an even number can be put into two groups evenly. So we put our rods and we put one here and one there and you do that until you're done, you see that they go in evenly, that's an even number. But that's your job as the parent as to how you want to define that, how you want to introduce that concept to your child. But you can see here that they'll actually discover a very important mathematical concept with these problems based on knowing the definition of even and odd. So for example, they'll discover that when you add two even numbers together, you always, always get an even number at the end. But when you add an odd and an even number together, you're always going to have an odd number at the end. At the end. So they're going to see these patterns, and that's how Mike Wan sort of shows them the concepts. They're going to see the patterns throughout the book. So you can see here that, that they then learn even and odd, and when you add evens and odds together, what happens? There's some additional practice here, and you can see they've actually got you filling in blanks on diff both sides of the equation. So that's really useful and great for the student to be doing that. This is the first grade book. So you've got some subtraction in here, some number lines, using number lines with subtraction. This is sideways. There's some, also some pages. Let's see if I can find you one. I right, here's one right here. Oh, I love these pages. My students love these pages too, because these are basically patterns. This is a very visual learner book. Um, these are pages that you're supposed to cut out and make a book with and you'll you'll see the pattern of two. This is basically skip counting by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. And this is the two times table, just the two section. So you see the patterns of the different numbers. And you can see it's made for you to take this page out. These are actually perforated on the side here. So even though I cut the binder, there is a perforation. And then the line there is for you to, to cut or to fold to make it into a little book, which you can see I didn't do. I photocopied these pages and did that because I'm weird. We already determined that. So then there's this arrow game. This arrow game is based on a hundreds chart. Again, there's not really a lot of instruction. They get a hundreds chart right here, but
but it's your job to show them what these arrows mean in relationship to this chart. So this is very teacher led, but it's a lot of fun activity. So they're learning these concepts, they're seeing these patterns based on these games that they're playing. And there's lots of great practice in here. Because of the lack of instruction and the fact that I can't hand this to my child and say, oh, this is your math, do these four pages today. But instead I have to lead them in that. I often use this on what we call, we, in my house, we call it Monday math with mom. And that's where all of us of all ages get together and I pull out things for us to do for math just for fun and to basically relieve the tension that any of my children might have with math to take out some anxiety. If I have a second or third grader who's really struggling with math, I might take their curriculum and set that aside for a time. And we might just do some of this, some pages in the Mikewan books or something else to do the math concept, but to make it fun. So that's the blue book. So let's just take real quick. You see the format of each of these books is pretty much the same, except that the concepts get a little harder. So here's the green book. This is supposed to be the this is not first grade. The blue is not first because I don't have the first book. The first grade books are orange and red. So blue is second grade. Sorry, I said that it was first earlier. And this is second grade. This is the second half of second grade. So they're getting into multiplying and they learn things like three times four units or ones is often what we'd call it, is 12 units, right? 12 ones. But three times four tens is going to be 12 tens, which is also looks like this mathematically. So that we would say three times four tens is the same as three times 40 which is 120 or 12 tens. So you see it, they teach some of that. The emphasis on place value is really good in this book and that's really important. I cannot emphasize enough how important place value is. So you see some 15 divided by five is this, times five is that. You can see that this is actually a, not a negation, but a reciprocal. Dividing and multiplying by the same number is the same as multiplying by one, which is the same number at the end. You can see they have some problems for them to think of. I'd rather have three times two wormy apples or one fifth of 20 wormy apples. So they have to figure out which one's more or less depending on if they'd want to have more or less of those items. So if your child wants three times two wormy apples, you'd say, oh, why do you want that many wormy apples? Oh, because wormy apples are gross. Oh, so this is less than this. So kind of talking them through that would help them to understand, oh, we're comparing here. We're looking at less than, greater than that sort of concept in the book. Um, there are some, I'm looking for some more. Okay, the orange book where you would cut it out and they make a book. There is, it must be back there. No, I guess not. Some lines there, number lines, number line games, lots of great practice, connecting two names for the same number. 36 is the same as six squared. So you start to get into some exponents here. And this is just second grade. So that's rather advanced for that. So back here, because they learned the definition of squares and they've been memorizing the squares, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, all the way down, then they can look over here and go, oh yeah, so uh, 36 is six squared and make those connections there. So it's really, I like to say that this is a really great program for playing with numbers. If you wanna play with some numbers and do some math with your student and try to just kind of drill home some of those concepts, this is a lot of fun. My Kwan can be a lot of fun and it can relieve some of that anxiety. You'll see in the yellow book, we're getting to the third grade, which is their last year they have, this is just a three year program they have. You can see how the numbers get bigger. You start to, have, they start to have to fill in the operator, not just the answers and it gets more advanced. And here's another fold here, book that they make. You see there's a book. But again, you'll see there's a lack of instruction, but if you're okay and you're comfortable talking through it with your student and doing it with them and exploring the math concepts with them, then, then that's not a problem. There is a teacher book. I've looked at it in the past. It's basically a theory book on on how to teach this, but it's not a scripted word for word for each book. So if you're looking for a scripted program, this is not it. This is a math concepts, playing with math, getting in some of those drills in and making it fun introduction for first, second, third grade. That's really what this is. So you see the yellow book is a little more hard and then the purple book is their hardest book. And you'll see at the end, like you've got 
nested circles here, comparing things. There's some graphing. You'll notice they do things like use a triangle for the y-axis and a square for the x-axis. They're basically teaching the concept of graphing a number, but they're trying to kind of slide in. I like to say this is kind of like backdoor math because they're sliding in these concepts, but they're not confusing the student with x's and y's and variables and whatnot. They're using shapes, things the student knows to make it more fun. It's colorful. There's pages you cut out that you you fold and put back together. You use your quiz and your rods. Um, it, it can be a real fun program. So that's the Ma Myquan Math Lab Materials books designed for three years. I hope this has been helpful. I have a full review written up on the website as well as this video. So go check it out and have fun with math this year.